In this lab, we'll be discussing the muscles of the lower extremity. We're still on our muscle uh, checklist for the practical. Uh, we'll be in our fourth column now, the column all the way to the right. So we'll begin with the muscles uh, of the uh, upper thigh, the pelvic area, and then we'll finish up with the muscles of the leg. So let's take a look at the muscles coming from the pelvic area and the upper thigh. The first structure we want to look at, just as a reference point, is this ligament right over here. This is known as the inguinal ligament. Um, on the model that we're using today, this is the large leg model. It's very easy to see two muscles above the inguinal ligament. This here is the first one on our checklist. This is called the iliacus muscle. It actually sits right in the fossa of the ilium, right? the iliac fossa. And then this one here is actually coming down from the lumbar spine. This is known as the psoas major. Um, some people will actually consider this one muscle. They actually call it the ilio psoas. Notice psoas is spelled with a P. We don't pronounce it, but you do spell it with a P. So both of these muscles will unite together. And as they come out underneath the inguinal ligament, right here, they form a common tendon. And that tendon is going to go down to the lesser trochanter of the femur. When these two muscles contract, they cause flexion of the hip. Right? They're very powerful hip flexors. Now, most of the muscles we're going to see in this lab, you can also see on the small leg model, these two muscles you won't see that well. You won't see the uh, psoas muscle on the small leg model, and you kind of see it on the small leg model, uh, with the iliacus. These two muscles are best seen on the model that I'm demonstrating today, the large leg model. Okay, the third structure on our checklist is the iliotibial band. So there's this big, it's almost like a belt, like a strap, big, big fibrous tissue, all of this gray tissue right over here that goes right down towards the lateral part of our knee, actually passes the lateral part of the knee, is called the iliotibial band. This is one of the things you wanna always look at to let you know also that you're looking at the lateral aspect of the lower limb. Sometimes it gets a little bit confusing when you start taking the model apart. It's hard to tell what side is what. So use this as a reference point for the lateral aspect. This iliotibial band is important because it actually uh, acts as a support and it stabilizes the lateral part of our knee, right, the outside of our knee. We're going to see in a second a muscle that actually attaches into the iliotibial band and every time this muscle contracts it tightens the iliotibial band to stabilize our lateral part of the knee. All right, so this is the iliotibial band. You see sometimes here I abbreviate it as the ITB, right, iliotibial band. The muscle that I was referring to is the next one on our list. This is called the tensor fascia lata. Right? Sometimes in medicine they just kind of abbreviate it the TFL, right? but the tensor fascia lata. This muscle goes from the ASIS region right into the iliotibial band. You can see it here. It's actually attaching right into the iliotibial band. Now, every time this muscle contracts, it makes this band tight. And that's actually how they named it. Tensor means to tighten. The fascia lata is the tibial band, right? So it tenses the iliotibial band. That's right? so every time we take a step or you're exercising, maybe you're running on the treadmill or the elliptical, this muscle is contracting to tighten this band right over here. Yeah, so all of this is going to be tensed. Now, we'll move to the kind of lateral, posterior lateral aspect. This large muscle, right, most people know this one, this is called the gluteus maximus. It's a broad, flat muscle, kind of extends from the sacral and coccygeal region. And then notice, guys, it also goes into the iliotibial band over here. When this muscle contracts, it's actually a powerful extensor, right? This actually pulls the thigh back. When you go to stand up out of your chair and you have to extend your hips to do that, the glute max is a uh, one of the big muscles that are, are contracting to do that. All right, so this is the gluteus maximus, kind of starts posterior and then it works its way lateral. 
more on the lateral side over here is the second gluteus muscle called the gluteus medius. There is a third one. It would actually be underneath the gluteus medius. In our models, we can't see it because we can't take the gluteus medius off. So it would be underneath just a smaller version of the gluteus medius. That one is going to be called the gluteus minimus. Right? So you kind of think of them kind of being together. This muscle here is a very strong abductor of the hip. It's going to do abduction of the hip. All right? So it's going to actually pull the thigh out laterally. Now, part of this muscle is under the cover of the gluteus maximus. So we can take the gluteus maximus off. So over here you can see the gluteus maximus was removed. That's where it was. And now we can see the rest of the gluteus medius. So it's actually a pretty big muscle also. So all of this here, kind of a triangular muscle. This is the gluteus medius muscle. Again, a powerful abductor. I'll go back a slide. Again, here we can see it, but it's covered by the gluteus maximus. So if you want to see it in its entirety, you have to take off the max. The next six muscles, you can see them right here, are under the gluteus maximus. We actually see five out of the six are going to be the lateral hip rotator group. Before I show you those, I want to introduce this big nerve right over here. This yellow structure is the largest nerve in the body. This is called the sciatic nerve. Right? Sometimes you hear about that. People have a sciatica. Well, this is the nerve that uh, can be pinched. So we need to use this as a reference point for finding the six muscles, the lateral six rotator muscles, and identifying them correctly. Actually, you know, let me go back one. One of the things that I always did when I was a student, I kind of remember this little saying, please go, go quietly. And if you look at my checklist, the P for please stands for the piriformis muscle. The G stands for the gemellus superior. The O stands for the obturator internus. The second G stands for the gemellus inferior. Now on this side here, on this dissection, we can't see the next muscle that should be in line. That would be the obturator externus. So I put there in your checklist that uh, it's not visible on this on, on this dissection. And then the last one is going to be the Q, quadratus femoris. So by remembering, please go, go quietly, you'll know the order of the muscles. So how do you identify the piriformis? I always tell you, even during the practical, take your finger, run it up, the sciatic nerve, run it all the way up until your finger stops and it hits a muscle. That muscle right above your finger is going to be the piriformis muscle. The muscle, now if you do your little mnemonic, the next muscle right underneath it will be the gemellus superior, obturator internus, gemellus inferior. The next one should be the obturator externus, but we're not going to see it on this dissection. And then the Q, this big kind of quadrangular looking muscle, is the quadratus femoris. Um, gemellus means twins. When the anatomist looked at it, this muscle and this muscle, they thought were like twins. So they call this the upper twin, gemellus superior. And then this is the lower twin, the gemellus inferior. So I labeled it. And you can see everything here kind of in place. So again, gluteus medius, piriformis, gemellus superior, obturator internus, gemellus inferior, and then the quadratus femoris. And so if you kind of just remember that, please go, go quietly. Now, I group these together, and even if you look at your checklist, I call them the lateral hip rotator group, meaning that their job, and they all work synergistically, is to rotate the hips lateral, right? It just kind of turns the thigh out. All right, so really, just a matter of identifying them, and they all do the same thing. They all do the same action. That brings us to the inner thigh. All right, so the inner thigh actually have five, has five muscles. We're going to see four out of the five on this dissection. The first muscle I want you to start with is this most superficial belt. It's called the gracilis. It's like a strap or a belt. It's going to be the most superficial. Use this as your landmark. Once you find the gracilis, 
go back one muscle this big muscle over here and we're not even seeing the whole thing we're seeing a part of it it actually fills up most of the inside of our thigh this is called the adductor magnus right magnus meaning large from the magnus go back to the gracilis then go forward one this muscle here running straight up right to the pubic bone is going to be the adductor longus Right. Underneath this muscle, there is an adductor brevis, but we can't take it off, so it's just there, um, but we can't see it. Okay, so from this view, start with your gracilis, go back one, adductor magnus, go back to the gracilis, go forward this time, adductor longus. When you're doing this on the model, then take your finger on the adductor longus, bring it all the way up until you hit the pubic bone, and then you're going to turn the the, the, the model around so that you're in the front. Here's the pubic bone. This muscle right over here is going to be the uh, the next one. This is going to be our um, pectineus muscle. So this muscle right underneath here is the pectineus and that's the fifth of this group. Again, I put this group together because they all do the same action. If you look at the checklist, I labeled this as the adductor group. Right? So the gracilis, adductor longus, adductor magnus, adductor brevis, pectineus, all do adduction, meaning that they bring the thighs together. Right? So all of these are powerful muscles that bring our thighs together. The next group we want to take a look at are the muscles on the front of the thigh. So we usually hear them as being the quadricep group. Before we look at the quads, I want to show you one muscle that is actually anterior to the quadricep group. Right? So this is an anterior view. Right? We can see that because here's the kneecap. Here is that inguinal ligament that's kind of in the front. So running from the ASIS like a belt, around the front of the thigh and then it curves around along the inside of the thigh all the way down to the leg so it spirals around this muscle is called the sartorius it's the longest muscle in the body yeah, so it's easy to find it's right in front of the quadricep group it spirals around the front of the thigh the inside of the thigh and then goes down to the inside of the leg it actually goes to the tibia we need this muscle to actually cross our ankle over the knee. If you're going to cross your legs, this muscle is needed. So um, that, that would be the action. It's kind of more complex than that. You know, it actually flexes, abducts, and laterally rotates the thigh. And then it also flexes, medially rotates the knee. So it's just easier to say that it, we need it to cross the leg. I'd be fine with that. The next group we want to look at and you see I put them together on our checklist are the quadricep group, right, the quads. So these are on the front of the thigh. The most anterior running straight up and down, right? Since it runs straight up and down, they call it a rectus muscle, right? That means it erect, it's running straight up and down. This is known as the rectus femoris, right? So it's on the front of our thigh, runs straight up and down. Then the next three muscles, if you look at their names on the checklist, all have the same name. They're called vastus. There's a vastus lateralis, a vastus medius, and a vastus intermedius. So take a look, just lateral to the rectus femoris, right over here. This is the vastus lateralis. Then over here, just on the inside, this is the vastus medius. Now, the vastus intermedius we can't see unless we take the rectus femoris off. So on the next slide, I popped it off and then this muscle now would be the vastus intermedius. Here's your vastus lateralis. Here's your vastus medius. All four muscles work synergistically to extend the knee, right? So they actually straighten your leg. If you were going to kick a soccer ball, let's say, and you straighten your leg, you would be contracting all four muscles. The rectus femoris, since it crosses the hip joint, can also flex the hip, right? So this one actually is working on two different joints. The rectus femoris can flex the hip and extend the knee, but the three vastus muscles can only extend the knee.
the remaining muscles or the last muscles on the thigh are the posterior muscles and these are what you may know as the hamstrings so again I group them together because they have uh, similar actions they all do the same thing for the most part so we can see here's a posterior view of the thigh and right? we can see the gluteus maximus here's the iliotibial band right so that's that means that we're on the lateral side over here so the one muscle that's on the lateral side and you always want to find the ITB and then you'll know the muscle right next to it is going to be the bicep femoris. And bicep means that it has two heads. It actually has two parts. So this is the bicep femoris. Then the next two muscles both have the same beginning of the name, semi. One is called the semitendinosus, and then the other one is called the semimembranosus. So the most superficial muscle right here is the semitendinosus. When you see it in the lab, it'll have a long, thin tendon that goes right down to the tibia. Then deep to it, you can see I labeled it here and here. This muscle being a little bit broader is going to be the semimembranosus. So the semimembranosus is kind of broad and flat. It lies deep. The semitendinosus is more superficial, right, lying on top of the semimembranosus. I tried to blow it up a little bit just to show you that semimembranosus you can see here and you can see it over here. In the lab you'll be able to pop this whole thing off and look at it more closely.